so we are doing loka shabda which is krishna shabda when we say krishna shabda it means aramanta krishna sangya it's aramanta so loka yukta su vishnu bhakti siddham vishnu padam and we know about this words in the brackets for now, now indicatory letters which are removed uh, and they are not used in the declension the process locus then sar ramayo vishnu sargo uh, vishnu padante so it becomes loka fine any question you may ask uh, then after doing this we'll move ahead so loka yukt au uh, odvai au that's all so it becomes loka au odvai au again the sandhi sutras are important as well so please work on them i want to give actually few exercises to you uh, in the group uh like for homework but uh, i'm always like uh, hesitating to do because like mostly everyone of you are having different services or something like throughout the week days so i'm like shall i give or not so if you all say that we, i can give something then i can give something then so it will be helping a lot bro because you are going through the theoretical part but i understand there might be difficulties in service and all but uh, i i am doubtful if without practice i'll be able to catch up the whole thing so it will help at least i feel oh. yeah i'm extremely busy but i also would appreciate getting the exercises even if i don't do them it would uh, help me to uh, mm -hmm. to practice even if i don't finish them okay so let's do one thing we'll give exercise but we won't assess them means as such like officially it's like just for the sake of practice and of course if you have any questions or something you can ask that is for sure so we'll give exercise and so that it will help you digest the points we study in the classes okay loka yukta jas then uh tatra jata sanga paita angsta sango sarishta so for removing these indicatory letters Can you please? Okay. The sutra is tatra jata shanga pa ita unksha songa se rishcha. So, or you can just directly consider them removed and move ahead. So loka yukta as. But for that you should know which word is indicatory letter in all the pratyas. If you know that, then it's okay. Then. दशावतारे कात्मके मिलित्वा त्रिविक्रम एंड देन सर रामयोर विष्णु सर्गो विष्णु प्रदान सो लोक 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 क्लियर देन लोक युक्त अम नाउ इन दिस केस वी हैड अ सूत्र दशावतार नो दशावतारा Am Shasor Aram Hara. If you remember that after, if a Dasha Vatara is a Purva Nimitta, in this case it is a Rama. So Dasha Vatara, and then we have Am or Shas following. So in this case we have Am following. So the A of Am, Am Shasor Aram Hara. The A Rama gets Hara, and Hara means Lopo Hara, Sangya Prakaranam. So Hara means deletion. so this a gets deleted which belongs to am and which comes after the dasha avatar okay let's write the equation as well for this one so if there is a dasha dasha avatar and then uh, a rama okay let's just write a rama belonging to either am which is 2 1 and orshas which is 2 uh, 3 then in that scenario what is that 
so in that scenario what would happen is uh, okay sorry if we have the shavatara and then am or shas then a rama belonging to either am or shas will get deleted this is like the equation for the sutra okay yeah that was sutra 94 okay so you turn it into an equation right this is 94 right so we can write 94 even Ninety-four. So by this sutra, what we do is, okay, we can even write sutras everywhere like this. Um, so here we had the sutras Sara Rama or Vishnu Sargo, uh, Vishnu Padante, which means if we have either Sara Rama or Ra Rama. Uh, Vishnu Padanta at the end of a Vishnu Pada, and we know what is Vishnu Pada now. Then, in that case, uh, Sir Ram Vishnu Sargo, Vishnu Padante. Then, in that case, this Sir or Ra Rama will change to a Visarga or Vishnu Sarga. Yeah, so that was the equation there. So these were, uh, which sutra was this, Mataji? Uh, I think ninety, ninety one. Ninety three. Ninety three. Okay. So this was ninety three sutra. Then loka yukta am dashavatara dam shasura rama haraha. So a of am gets deleted. And we get locum. Okay. Then moving ahead, two two is same as one two. Loka yukta o, and then we apply sandhi sutra odvay o, so it becomes loka o. Same. Then two three. Loka yukta. Shas, so the sh gets removed because it's an indicatory letter. It, so what we have is loka yukta as. Now, again we apply ninety fourth sutra, which is the shavatara damshasora rama haraha. And because this is shas, which comes after the shavatara. So the a rama of shas gets deleted. So what we have is loka yukt sa. Now we had another sutra here, which said, uh, yeah, the shavatarasya trivikrama shasi tasmat sona pungsi. That if there is a dashavatara at first place. And if there is the shavatara se trivikrama shasi shas following, then what happens is uh, the dashavatara shavatara becomes trivikrama. This was the first implication of the rule: the shavatara yukta shas, then the shavatara becomes trivikrama. So here we have shas. And we, here we have the shavatara. So this the shavatara becomes trivikrama because shas is following. So loka, oops, loka, yukta sa. And then the sutra further said, tasmat so naha pungsi. And after that, the sa of shas becomes. Na Rama, right? So Loka Yukta Na, 
and when and then we just combine them locan is that clear or any doubt in the sutras applications no that's very clear so does punksi refer to the entire sutra or only okay, the okay okay i missed that part i missed that part really sorry so uh, the shavdara sutra vikramashasi tasmat sonah punksi uh yeah the punksi just a minute actually that's a good question radham radha tama radha and then we had radha then radha is the shavdara shas radha uh, i think it belongs to the second part but let us see what does it say um after that the sa of shas becomes na if the vishaya is in the masculine gender so this belongs to the second part only uh, to this part so sa of shas becomes na only in purushottam linga which is the masculine gender any doubt here till here 2.3 we did lokah lokau lokah and we are also introducing all the sutras like in in the form of equation so to say lokam lokau lokan this is 95th sutra right must yes be. yes 95 yes yeah. okay uh, shall we move ahead mhm then yes. comes 3 1 okay charuta mata ji what is the pratyaya 3 1 three one no ruchira mata ji or rukmini mata ji sorry yeah it's the please please the pratyayas are very important the whole chapter is based upon the pratyayas so words will change but pratyayas will remain same so please do memorize uh so loka yuktata and uh, then we had a sutra which said what did it say mm, krishnat ta inah after a krishna shabd again when we say krishna shabd it doesn't just mean the krishna word but it means word ending with a rama this this should be clear when we say krishna word it means a word ending with a rama smaller so krishna ta inah when we have a krishna word uh, which basically means a mm, rama and if we have ta then in such a scenario uh, situation ta is replaced by what ta is replaced by what krishna ta ina 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 this krishna ta word ending with or this is sutra 96 right 97 7 okay before that we had some something else right aramanta krishna sanya okay aramanta krishna sanya that i have explained here uh, that when we say krishna word so krishna shabda it means all the words ending with the small arama that is aramanta krishna sanya it's like a definition like when we say dashavatara so dashavatara means dasha dashavatara the first 10 vowels out of the sarveshwaras so that is a sangya a definition similarly krishna here is a definition for all the words which end with with a rama so ta is replaced by ina uh, so we do loka yukta uh, ta is replaced by ina so ina now we apply the sandhi sutra advaya medvaya a and we get lokena it's very hard to remember anything without memorizing the sutras 
you may do it till some extent without memorizing sutras but uh, we won't be able to go so far without properly following the structure so advanidvai uh, lokena clear then 3 to which number is that which sutra advanidvai oh no i thought another one the other one you mentioned no advanidvai this is 97 okay. and what is that 43 43 43 so that is 43 prabhu acha then loka yukta bhyam 3.2 3.2 stands for tritya bahu uh, tritya dvivachan tritya vibhakti dvivachan so loka yukta bhyam now we had a sutra with the sutra said krishnasya trivikrama gopale if we have a krishna word and if we have gopala following to know what is gopala we have to go back to the sangya prakarana and the gopala is hari gada hari ghosha hari venu hari mitrani hashta gopala so if this is the case a krishna shabda yukta gopala then the a rama becomes trivikrama krishna se trivikrama gopale right this is sutra 98 hmm. i don't remember the numbers because in the brihat one they are different and in the madhyama here it is different so that's why so here we have loka which is a krishna word and then we have bhyam which starts begins with a gopala because bha is a hari ghosha and hari ghosha is a part of gopala sangya so what will happen is a will become uh, a the trivikrama a so loka bhyam clear please ask anything if there is any doubt then loka yukta okay who would tell rama pramaya prabhu the next pratyaya no anyone the next pratyaya he is this 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 uh now we have one other sutra which says what is the sutra krishna bhis ais if we have krishna word yukta bhis then bhis is replaced by ais i will share this file of course you can also write simultaneously but i will also share so bhis is replaced by ais and sutra is sutra number 99 99 so loka and bhis is replaced by ais by that sutra lo krishna bhis ais and we get ais now we apply a dvay ai a dvay ai because it is ai so they become lokais and then again we apply the previous sutra sar ramayor vishnu sargo vishnu padante so lokai clear is it okay to all yes radha radha aspi hari prabhu what about you are you following up copying up with the previous lessons no yes anyhow so okay 
we move ahead what is the next pratyaya what is the next pratyaya 4.1 ne 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 so loka yukta ne then another sutra here mm, so that is what is the sutra krishnat mer yah we have if we have this combination uh this one krishna yukt ne then this this ne is replaced by what yeah sutra number One hundred. Uh, so, ne is replaced by ya. So we do loka yukta krishna ne ya ya. Now again, here we apply sutra number ninety-eight because ya is a gopala because it's a hari mitra and hari mitra comes under the sangya gopala sangya. So this. a uh, becomes trivikrama then so it becomes lokaya okay means uh, in the shastras and everywhere the aramanta shabdas are really frequently used and we can easily easily relate to many of the words like lokaya is very much this vibhakti is very much used lokena lokai like 90% of the vibhaktis are very often used in the shastras for aramanta shabdas so they will be very easy to be figured out even i have a question regarding the second and the fourth vibhakti because they both say in the description that in english the word two is used like two krishna two uh, but in the second vibhakti um it says like sukhridam dadati or something like this like to a, like i see a friend i see a friend but the fourth vibhakti is like to give no dative so that's my question oh, why the, you are asking about the meaning the meaning of the vibhakti is okay of course means uh, that's the fourth chapter but in brief uh, the fourth vibhakti stands for sampradana uh, one who is the recipient who is receiving Uh-huh. means see one thing is that all the vibhaktis they carry a primary meaning one each but all the vibhaktis they also have multiple meanings yeah that is also another side of the vibhaktis so i'm just talking of the primary ones now so the fourth vibhak vibhakti is sampradana which means uh, the the recipient of the action one who is receiving like the dati so who is so let's say raja the dati king is giving so who is the receiver to whom the king is giving someone might be there so that person becomes uh, the recipient sampradana and second vibhakti is what is given the object acha if let's say okay let's do some karaka also um i will just write one sentence it will cover all the vibhaktis or rather all the karakas okay uh, ganga tire raja swa haste na oh, ganga tire स्व गोष्ठा राजा हस्ते न ब्राह्मय गा so some subject is there right 
वन मिनट ओके डन गाम ददाते सो दिस सेंटेंस यूजेस ऑल द कारकस अच्छा राजा इज द डूअर सब्जेक्ट सो द किंग ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग गंगा तीरे इज सेवन वन लाइक कृष्ण या लोकेटिव लोकेटिव व्हिच इज नोन एज लोकेटिव वी कैन राइट सो गंगा स्व गोष्ठात इज एबलेटिव एंड लिटरली इट वुड मीन फ्रॉम या ड्यू टू नो स्व गोष्ठात इज फ्रॉम हिज ओन गोष्ट गोष्ट इज लाइक द काउ शेड like a goshala from. not not out from, out not far out of so ghost is like the cow house as we say the goshala uh, about for cattle so basically cow house ghost station of animals where the animals are kept in this case a goshala in proper so from his goshala from mm. from his goshala raja is 11 one, one, uh, which is the doer subject hmm. then hastena is mm, in, in instrumental third three one and it's instrumental now we are just discussing the primary meanings of vibhaktis and not the other uh-huh. ones uh, then brahmanaya hastena means by his hand by hmm. his hand brahmanaya means 41 which means uh, dative right yeah to unto brahmana or to the brahmana gam is to one uh, object yeah so the brahmana was the indirect object and the gam is the direct object accusative yeah object or Uh, means uh, please elaborate mataji like uh, how is brahmana indirect object and because it's to the brahman i mean that's what indirect object means so the dative was the indirect object means in english grammar do they say like that yes yeah yeah the verb applies to if the verb directly applies or indirectly applies yeah means kriya vishe sambandha visheshi karakam so karaka is uh, something uh basically karakas are connectors between the noun nouns and the verb the used verb so i heard it for the first time that this is like indirect object uh yeah yeah they taught us in means this is something new for me you know? but in any case the main object is gam uh, the object which is being given and unto whom to brahmana and the dati is like a verb it's and about the karakas regarding the karakas which will be the karakas in this of in this sentence uh, i mean the, the vibhaktis itself they are the karakas okay so that is another thing one is vibhakti and another concept is karakas so vibhaktis are seven and karakas are six in number vibhaktis just mean the pratyas uh, mm-hmm. and they have got nothing to do with the meaning in proper let's say like that they are just mm-hmm. the pratyas they deal with the vachana uh, yeah mainly vachana and yeah but karakas they are six in numbers and they are connectors uh to the verb and yes for example for example uh, like the dati so if we raise question the dati means give to give so uh-huh. who gave in this sentence who gave raja so yeah so now anything which is directly connected to the kriya uh, that's a karaka so who gave okay. raja gave 
what was given gam ka was given by which means it was given hastena to whom it was given so everything all the karakas they must have a direct relation with the verb okay so karakas would be who whom uh Means by like, how just, like just, this just just write uh, from i'm just giving from uh, jiva goswami kriya sambandha vishesh vishe visheshi oops visheshi karakam karaka means or karaka indicates the the special vishesh means special or let's say direct relation with the verb so different authors different grammarians they have explained differently some they also say is karakas to be connectors and this is what jiva goswami gives the sutra in karaka prakaranam the fourth chapter kriya sambandha visheshi karakam so then one of the seven vishnu bhaktis must be missing uh, that is the sixth one uh, sambodhana not sambodhana sambandha no. how do you say that in english uh, genitive genitive i think relative is no, good no wait genitive is yeah no? genitive is genitive possession possession yeah possession is also good one so now you cannot fit the sixth case with the dati yeah it doesn't have to do with the verb it has to do with another um noun. yeah another connectors hmm. for for example if i say uh, raja gave the cow of his father let's say like that of his father so like let's say pituhu so raj pituhu means um, let's use one example or let's use simple word uh, ramasya of rama so now raja the king uh, gave the cow of rama in sanskrit how would we write it uh raja uh ramasya gam dadati so dadati is present and so uh, is given now in this case raja ramasya gam dadati the king is giving the cow of rama now this of rama is connected with cow cow of whom of rama but this of rama is not directly connected to giving the act of giving is that clear yeah very clear so that's why the sixth case is not considered as karaka because it's not a connector uh, it's connected with another noun the other connectors uh, so it's indirectly connected to the kriya not directly so that is what it is Okay, so each one of the vibhakti would be a karaka, except for the genitive, which means that has a relationship not with the verb but with the object, right? Yes, yes. Is it clear to everyone? Uh, this is like a very basic concept of karaka, and when we move study the fourth chapter, then we'll go into details. Yes, sir. So this is very important because shlokas. are composed of nouns so i i think i told that before even that in any sentence any shloka any commentary anything you read uh, the usage of verbs is literally 10% let's say in front of nouns you you see nouns and nouns and nouns in different forms with different vibhaktis different karakas let's say if there is a shloka you may find one verb or maybe two 
the other rest of the words are uh, nouns or avyayas and avyayas are also considered as nouns which cannot be declined so that's why uh, these are very important things to know and yes yeah in some songs there's no verb like it's just yeah. <laughs> a lot of names of the you know nouns glorifying the person yes like uh, if you read vishnu sahasranam you know things like that um, so there are it's just a list of nouns unending nouns so so yes okay continuing the discussion uh i was thinking when you mentioned this i i thought about this verse in the radha kripa katakshasta varaj maheshwari krishwari sadeshwari sadeshwari veda bharati sorry all this na huh? all nouns but then at the end we say shri radhika in most of day so the number one uh. yeah astu astu is huh? astu is a verb uh. uh okay then we move to the next one that is 42 uh so 42 is same like 32 loka yukta bhyam krishnasya trivikrama gopale rule 98 and loka bhyam okay then 4.3 loka yukta what is the next pratyaya yeah bhyas yes bhyas uh here we had a sutra if you remember krishnasya a vaishnave bahutve if we have krishna word and if we have a vaishnava following which is in bahuvachana which is in bahuvachana then in that case a uh, becomes a which sutra is that anyone 100 one yes okay so krishnasya a vaishnava bahutve if there is a vaishnava in bahu vachana after a krishna word then a becomes a so in this case bhyas is plural ne bhyam bhyas 4 3 and bha is also vaishnava the definition of vaishnava is vishnu dasa hari gotrani vaishnava and bha is definitely a vishnu dasa now what is vishnu dasa then ta edad varjita vishnu dasa so you have to know everything to identify bha as vaishnava so then in that scenario a is replaced by a ram so loke bhyas and then we just combine them so when we combine them so for combining we have that sutra vishnu bhakti siddham vishnu padam so you can keep that in mind mind uh, in your mind not my mind <laughs> so loke bhyas and then the famous sutra sar ram yur vishnu sarga vishnu padante loke bhya clear okay then moving ahead 51 loka then the pratyaya is nasi so for those who might not know these letters in the brackets they are just used for some other purposes and not for declension not for the formation of the final word so we just remove them as we decline we do not use them so loka yukta as so we have a sutra here which says krishnat nase rat after a krishna word if we have this pratyaya uh, nasi then this nasi is replaced by what at this is sutra number 100 what 2 3 2 102 
So in this case, nasi is replaced by at. So, so loka yukta at and dashavatarik atma kemilitva trivikramaha lokat. Lokat. As we saw, svagoshthat, koshtha becomes goshthat, similarly loka becomes lokat. Clear? Then 5.2 is similar as 3.2 and 4.2. Loka yukta bhyam and then Krishna Satra Vikrama Gopale, Loka Bhyam. Then 5.3 is also similar to 4.3. Loka Yukta Bhyas and then Krishna Sya E Vaishnava Bahutve and Loke and then Sara Rana Vishnu Sarka Vishnu Dante, Loke Bhya. Then 6.1 Loka Yukta Nas. Now we have a sutra here which says Krishnasya, no, Krishnat Nasasya. Krishnat Nasasya, which means if we have a Krishna. What has been removed and today is going to uh, return my first man. Please mute yourself if you are not speaking to in the class. Okay. So Krishnat Nasasya. If we have Krishna word and then uh, nas pratyaya, then in that case, this nas is replaced by what? Sya. Sutra number is 103? Three. Three. So nas is replaced by sya. So loka yukta sya and we just combine them loka sya very famous one sya clear any doubt six two loka yukta os which sutra did we had here did we have that was krishna sya a o c if we have a krishna word and os following then that Krishna word a Rama becomes a Rama. I think this must be Sutra 104. And yes. So a Rama becomes a Rama when O's follows. So Loke Yukta O's. Now further we apply the Sandhi Sutra, which was uh, AI, if you remember. Loka yukta os. We combine them. Loka yos and Sara Rami or Vishnu Sarga Vishnu Padante. Loka yo. Any doubt here in this one? We applied three sutras here. First was Krishnasya, uh, Krishna, no, Krishnasya AOC, where we replaced a by a. Then we applied a I, A became I, and then we just combined them, and then this Sir Rama became uh, the Vishnu Sarga. Sir Rama Vishnu Sarga Vishnu Padante. Okay. Then we have Krishna Yukta, Loka Yukta Am 6.3. Now here we have few sutras. The first sutra says, uh, Vamana Gopi Radha Bhyo Nudami. If we have a Vamana Akshara or we have a Gopi Akshara or we have a Radha Akshara. So like Krishna Akshara means Aksharas which end with a Rama, the short Vamana A. Similarly, Gopi is a Sangya, Gopi Sangya, which means um, words ending in either the Trivikrama E Rama or ending with the Trivikrama U Rama in feminine, of course. And Radha means words which end uh, with the Trivikrama A. So 
so lit- they are not literal words to be used they are sangyas like krishna sangya so if we have either vamana gopi or radha shabdas at the first place and am following like like in this case 63 so what will happen krishna vamana gopi radha we no daming then this pratyaya nut will uh, will be inserted in between in between what in between the uh, in between just in between in between these and this so this is sutra 100 Five. Five. So, so, with the other, um, we knew what was what belonged in brackets because there was this sutra ninety one, tatra jata shana pa ita ush. So, how do we know that nude is is actually just the n and not? Okay. How do we know? So, tatra. Is, if you remember, tatra jata shana pa ita ungsta masorishcha. the sutra prior to that was tatra sumauja samausha ityadi which described all the 21 pratyayas right mm-hmm. so now tatra jatasha that tatra indicates tatra kutra tatra means there where right. in the previous sutra which means the 21 pratyayas described in the previous sutra right so now nut is not amongst those 21 pratyayas so that sutra exactly. is particularly mentioned mentioning the indicative letters of 21 pratyas and, right. and, and note is not a part of 21 pratyas so now so the question is how come we know that uh, what is an indicative letter and what is not then in the book itself uh, very clearly they have used this mm, uh, uh brackets yes that's where all the brackets came from so they yeah. they just one thing rama pramaya prabhu one of the devotee he also asked that okay in english we have this bracket so if we are reading in devanagari let's say so how how do they come to know what is an indicatory letter and what is not which was a good question actually so for that actually uh, jiva goswami mentions in the vritti in the commentary in the vritti that uta vitu if we open 105th sutra let's say uh, 105th sutra here it is uh, the agama vamana gopi radha punu dami the agama nut is inserted after so idrisho vidhi vishnu uh, tid agama parasmandi kid agama purva sambandhi so here he mentions that uh tid agama that ta it ta rama is an it hmm. he, he mentions so everywhere in, he introduces some new pratyay or something new which has got indicatory letter in it so either he will make a general rule like tatra jata shavapa or he will specify in the vritti okay out of this uh these letters are indicator letters for example now in other batch we are studying dhatus and there we have a pratyaya which is shap yeah okay shap so what he says there in vritti to clarify what is to be used and what is indicator letter and thus not to be used he says uh shapa uh shapa vitau and then he says arama mm arama she shah if we break this shapa vitau it means uh shapau itau this is like dvivachana of ita like krishna krishna ita ita so sh and pa they are it here so in english they indicated it like this and a rama shesha means out of this a rama remains is the remainder so that's how they follow 
I think this is clear. Even Rama Pramaya too. Is that clear? If you are still here, maybe. So, so does it make sense, Mataji? Yes. No. Well, I mean, I would not have been able to understand even from that vritti that that that. that yeah, that's, that's why we need a teacher. <laughs> yes, can, exactly. Who can explain to us? Uh, <laughs> So loka yukta am. So here we have a vamana akshara, and then we have am following. So in this case, uh, we insert nut, and then am. So then in the vritti it says that in a in a pratyaya when t is an it is an indicative letter, then it joins with the word ahead. Para samandhi, if you remember, it joins with the word ahead, so it becomes loka yukta nam. Now here uh, we have another sutra. So here we apply hundred five, and then we have another sutra which says uh, Krishna sya trivikramo nami. So, if we have Krishna and we have Nam following, like in this case, then this Krishna word becomes Trivikrama. This is the Sutra. This is 106th, right? It looks like 107. 107, maybe because we have Tatratin with Osarvataga, that's Sutra. sutra. Yeah, that one. So, A uh, becomes Trivikrama, uh, Vamanasya Trivikrama Nami, Mrishabdasya to Vamanasya Trivikrama Nami. Okay, Vamanasya Trivikrama Nami. So, it doesn't say A uh, only, it says Vamana, any Vamana Akshara. So, any Vamana Akshara, and then we have Nam. So, this Vamana Akshara becomes Trivikrama. Now, there is an exception here, Vamana Akshara, for Nrishabda, okay, first of all, Natisri Chatasro, the words Tisri and Chatasri, which we'll study ahead, they are excluded from this list, even though they end with the Vamana Akshara, both of them. And even also, the word nri is optional. It ends with the Vamana Akshara, but it optionally becomes Trivikrama. So there will be two forms for nri. So nri is uh, op optionally, uh, how to say, Trivikramaized. <laughs> Trivikramaized. <laughs> how does it sound? <laughs> Anyhow, mm -hmm. so that's good. <laughs> so at 8 p.m. on 8th of May 21. <laughs> Is there any form of getting one trivikramized, like to some mantra or something? <laughs> this is Sanskrit plus, plus English. So we'll form some, some... sadhana for trivikramization. <laughs> we'll have to form some grammar. Vikramized. <laughs> it's like Krishnaized and you know things like that. So Trivikramized. <laughs> Anyhow, so so thus Loka is ending with the Vamana Akshara. Nam is following. So we turn it into Trivikrama by that sutra and it becomes Loka Nam. Loka Nam Trana Karanat Karanat. If you have heard that shloka that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared by, by Lokanam Tran Karana just to relieve uh, the world literally like of the miseries. Lokanam Tran, tran Karana. Or Sat Goshan is Lokanam Hita Karana. Yeah, Lokanam Hita Karana, that is also a good one. Lokanam. They, are, they were the well wishers of the people, lit, of the people. Hmm. Hmm. 
of the people by the people for the people <laughs> democracy mm. <laughs> anyhow okay was it clear 63 we had i mean i got lost a little yeah. bit i need to review the sutras but you explain it correctly i mean maybe i didn't study too much so i got lost a little bit mm -hmm. so because we have two sutras here and they are little complicated like little so even if you are not understanding this part this part just neglect it and just pay attention to the remaining like vamana and nam then vamana becomes trivikrama hmm so that is the main thing here okay hmm. we move ahead uh loka then we have the pratyaya ni uh then we have the sutra krishnat ner yah please 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 do work on sutras my humble request if we have arama krishna word and if we have the pratyani then in that case ni is replaced by no krishna neriya no krishna what is the sutra here krishna krishna oh no sutra actually i'm sorry it's just simple sandhi loka yukta e and then advamidva e that's all loke then 72 is same as 62 loka yukta os so the same process was followed there so uh, krishnasya a o c a i and we combine them and sarva ramer vishnu sarva vishnu padante lokayo same then 73 is loka what is the pratyaya the last one sup Here again we apply the previous sutra, Krishna sya a Vaishnava bahutve, because sup is in bahuvachana plural, and Sir Rama is a Vaishnava, because Hari Gotrani, Vishnu Das Hari Gotrani Vaishnava, it's a Hari Gotra. So a Rama changes to a, and then we just combine them, loke su. Now here we had a sutra. ईश्वर हरि मित्र कम ये भी अप्रत्यय विंचे सस्य शोन उम्म विष्णु सर्गे वर्धानी अपि न तो विष्णु पदाद्य अंत साथी नाम। When I read that sutra, studied that sutra for the first time, I was like, means <laughs> what is this? Because till now all other sutras were like comparatively short, but this sutra was like the biggest one till now. And I sort of gave up in my mind. Oh, I won't be able to do. <laughs> But uh, I just continue. So Ishwara. Is number one hundred eight? Yeah. Uh, what is that, Prabhu? Yeah, this is number one hundred eight, right? This oh, sutra. Maybe uh, I think so. Sutra Hari Mitra Kani. Yes, Kaan, yeah. yes, uh -huh. yes hundred eight. So if we have either Ishwara Hari Mitra Karama or Na Rama as Purva Nimittas. and if we have either nom or vishnu sarga as interventions as optional interventions i would rather say means they can be there or they cannot be there and then we have uh sa rama which must be belonging to belonging to a prat pratyaya pratyaya we know pratyaya is a normal suffix 
అండ్ ఓఫో గురించి ఐదర్ ఓఫో గురించి నా ఆదేశో గురించి సో గురించి లిటరలీ మీన్స్ ఓఫ్ ఆఫ్ సబ్స్టిట్యూషన్ లైక్ లెట్ సే వి సబ్స్టిట్యూట్ సంథింగ్ బై అనదర్ ప్రత్యే ఆర్ సంథింగ్ దెన్ దట్ అదర్ థింగ్ విచ్ ఆర్ బ్రింగింగ్ ఇన్ షుడ్ హ్యావ్ దిస్ సర్ ఆమ దెన్ ఓన్లీ దిస్ సర్ విల్ చేంజ్ టు షర్ సో ప్రత్యే ఆర్ గురించి దెన్ ఇన్ దట్ కేస్ దిస్ సర్ ఆమ okay i'll just remove this uh, it's pure sir this sir rama will change to the uh, the murdhanya the cerebral sh this is sutra 100 108 and i'm i'm just that numbers so that we wouldn't give up <laughs> uh, what is that prabhu mata ji they gave the lucky number 108 so we won't give up <laughs> <laughs> but in my version it was something else the number yeah. so sir will change to sir and i'll just skip the other informations which are being given uh, in the sutra we'll deal with that when it comes so so this is like the purva nimittas and this is the karyasthan the sarama and this is interventions vyavadhana and these are optional they can be there or they cannot be there so in such a case sarama changes to sh so here we have lokesu this sir belongs to the sir of pratyaya or rather let's do like this to make it more easy because now su is clearly a pratyaya here we have not yet combined it and uh, we have uh, ishvara here we do not have hari mitra here we do not have, do not have ka rama here and we do not even have na we have a hari ishvara just prior to sa rama so this sa uh, and there is no intervention here there is no nun and there is no vishnu sarga even so this sa uh, changes to sh simply so loke shu we can do either ways we can first combine and then change or or else we can just change and then combine both are good and we combine them lokeshu and the last part of that sutra is, so it's because the sa is between the a and the u like if the sa were at the very end it wouldn't happen okay na to vishnu pad padadi ant that this sa shouldn't be at the end of a word of a vishnu pad or shouldn't be at the big in the beginning of a word it should be somewhere in the between in between okay mata ji yeah uh is this okay with everyone so so the sa is neither initial nor final uh, yeah okay i believe that works out mm okay then 8 1 so this is sambodhana and the sambodhana takes the same vibhakti as tritiya vibhakti am i right yes really no no as the first vibhakti so out yeah <laughs> so that was intentional acha so it takes the prathama vibhakti so loka yukta su now we had one sutra which said sambodhane sur buddha sangya that the sambodhana su is known as buddha is just known as buddha that's all then we had another sutra which said what was the sutra then eo vamnebhyo buddhasya adarshanam if we have either a rama o rama or vamana and then a Buddh- then buddha comes which means the sambodhana su then this buddha gets deleted adarshana this is sutra 110 and the previous one was 109 yeah so here we have we do not have a or o at the first place but we have vamana 
and then we have buddha so this buddha gets deleted so we get loka which is literally o planet if we are taking in take it in that sense and if we are referring to someone to a pe- to some people or to a single person then he loka means o person uh, and like that literally but usually you don't refer to a single person as loka right it's, it's yeah. almost like collective yeah loka is like collective we can so o people we can say o people yeah so is that uh, related to that everyone has got like a world like an inner world of thought or is uh, that some <laughs> means i never thought of that so that's a good direction I, actually <laughs> i thought about this sutra it says munde 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 mati dina did you hear kunde kunde navapaya ha that says every person it's a it's a world uh-huh. just like different types of milk are in different types of pots no i really uh, hearing for the first time but actually that's a nice <laughs> thought we can Yeah, it says munde munde mati hi vina kunde kunde nava paya ha, mm-hmm. and then it says uh, nava mani mukhe mukhe something else nava mani mukhe mukhe like every person's got a language, like mm-hmm. every type of mind has a different type of language set. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like everybody has a different mind, different types of milk in different pots, and different mm-hmm. languages are coming from different types of mouth or something like mm-hmm. this. So. means i don't know uh, how both the meanings of loka are connected interconnected but uh-huh. there must be some connection means anyhow so loka yukta av so uh, same as previous ones odvay av loka av and the last one loka yukta jas so dashavatarik atma ke militva tri vikramah becomes lokas and sarva ram yo vishnu sarva vishnu padante loka wo we did it <laughs> uh, so is there any doubt still or uh, you would like to work more on it like if there is any doubt we can ask tomorrow uh, discuss tomorrow I think you put it very clearly I just have to review uh, hmm. review it. So I'll share the file in the group and so do whatever it takes but please complete this like the understanding and the meanings of the sutra and everything then because I want to make sure that it is nicely done and then we'll move ahead uh, with the next word. And of course do remember the whole table Uh, and i think if you do the declension then automatically you will get it the words so you will send us this pdf at this thing yeah yeah i'll send after the class can you please that's that's yeah i mean i will share the group. after class i'll share i found this subhashita but i cannot copy paste into the chat i don't know why okay it says how uh-huh, it's interesting that that one This is this munde munde mati hi bina kunde kunde nava paya ha jatau jatau nava chara ha nava vani mukhe mukhe. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can take a screenshot and send it in the group Telegram group after the class maybe. Oh, I can put it in the Telegram group. Yes. Oh uh, yeah. So please revise and anything you may ask, and yeah. so we'll do anvaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya shrimad bhagavatam canto 1 uh, chapter 2 text 9 and 10 together dharmasya hyap vargasya narthorthayo pakalpate wow so Oh, thank you that's the one yeah. uh so dharmasya so you can you are invited to read this shloka maybe after anvaya <laughs> so first we can do the anvaya and 
धर्मसापर्गस्य नाथोपकते नाथस्य धर्मकांतस्य कामो लाभाय ही स्मृत कामस्य से लाभो जीवे तयावता जीवस्य तत्व जिज्ञास नाथो यश्चे कर्म कर्म भी द सेकेंड चैप्टर इज फुल ऑफ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट श्लोक सो दिस दीज टू श्लोक आर बेसिकली टॉकिंग ऑफ द फोर एस्पेक्ट द चतुर्पुरुषार्थ चतुष्पुरुषार्थ धर्म अर्थ काम एंड मोक्ष देर पर्पज एंड सो ऑन सो अर्थ त्रिवर्गभूत अर्थ या त्रिवर्गभूत अर्थ यस त्रिवर्गभूत मीन धर्म अर्थ काम आपवर्ग्य अपवर्ग प्रयोजनक ज्ञानी योगी मते मोक्षजनक भक्त मते प्रेम भक्ति दस्य सो so, धर्म अर्थ एंड काम देर प्रयोजन और देर पर्पज इज टू अटेन अपवर्ग देर प्रयोजन और रादर पर्पज इज टू अटेन अपवर्ग ना अपवर्ग इज अंडरस्टूड in two fold ways by the two fold or two different groups so in the mata uh, according to the understanding of the gyana yogis and the yogis the mystic yogis gyani yogi according to them apavarga refers to moksha janakasya uh, moksha janakasya means which will result into liberation or which will janaka literally means one who begets you know one who generates begets so which will result into liberation such trivarga bhuta and bhakta mate in uh, as per the understanding of the devotees apavarga prayojana kasya means prema bhakti dasya one which will one uh, which will bestow uh, the prema bhakti so artha is for apavargasya and apavargas apavargasya is understood in these two ways by these different groups of people different schools of thought then dharmasya naishkarmya mulasya arthaya phalatvaya na upakalpate yogya na bhavati so now the activities which are done uh in a selfless spirit nishkarma means nishkarma doesn't mean uh, literally not doing action it means doing action but arthaya na upakalpate but not with a with a desire to attain the fruit that is nishkarma sakarma means performing action with a desire to attain the respective fruits the results and nishkarma doesn't mean not performing action but it means performing actions but arthaya na upakalpate it is not entitled the doer or the karta is not entitled uh, to to be uh, expecting yeah the results or the reactions or the fruits of the karma performed so that is dharmasya arthaya na upakalpate that the dharma the prescribed actions we do uh, which are ba- which are based on selflessness uh, so for that the phalatvaya na upakalpate it should not be done uh, for any fruits or any results then dharmai kantasya evam bhut dharma avyabhicharinah arthasya kamah त्रिवर्ग अंतर्भुक्त लाभाय फलत्वाय न ही मुनि भी स्मृत सो इट इज स्वीकृत इट इज एक्सेप्टेड बाय द सेजिस दैट सच अव्यविचारी धर्म सच अ परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटीज 
yes such performance of prescribed duties without which is avyavichari avyavichari is mm, non deviation non transgression which means which is done with the right attitude and with the right perception conception and not otherwise that is like avyavichari chaste literally it means chaste vyavichari means avyavichari means chaste and avyavichari means non chaste and avyavichari means chaste so if we say avyavichari ni patni so that would mean a chaste wife and if i say vyavichari vishya then that means a non chaste prostitute so evam bhuta dharma avyavicharinah arthasya so the the purpose arthasya the purpose of performing such uh, such uh, prescribed actions uh, with right chastity in the sense uh, without uh, expecting any fruits is kamah labhaya nahi is not to attain the trivar trivarg antarbhukta uh, which means the vishaya bhoga or basically dharma artha kama so we'll just read translation by prabhu pad just to make it more clear all occupational engagements are certainly meant for ultimate liberation apavargasya they should never never be performed for uh, material gain furthermore according to sages munibih swikritah or munibih smritah one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational service should never use material gain to cultivate sense gratification so one who is engaged in dharma ekantasya dharmasya in this should never use uh, material gain uh, this trivarga antarbhukta for uh, for uh, cultivation sense gratification cultivation of sense gratification so what is the meaning of the word antar in trivang त्रिवर्ग अंतर भुक्ता मीन्स समथिंग विच इज एंजॉइड यू नो भुक्त सो भुक्ता मीन्स समथिंग विच इज एंजॉइड नाउ द ऑब्जेक्ट और लिटरली द सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट विच आर obtained and enjoyed under the three categories dharma artha and kama okay so trivarga antarbhukta Ant- antar is like antar nihit you know in it so so like that okay and um evam bhuta uh, what was the function of evam bhuta in in that uh, evam bhuta dharma So, so evam bhuta is uh, is referring to the previous one, such a dharma, such a performance oh, of dharma, the nishkama karma, dharma. Right. Evam bhuta. Okay. Evam bhuta is like like this, as uh, yeah, like this. Then kama sya, vishaya bhoga sya, labha phalam indriya priti indriya toshanam na. So the fruit or the result. of vishaya bhoga the the consumption of the sense objects is not the pleasure of the senses okay the result of sen- consumption of sense objects is not the pleasure of the senses kintu but yavata yat parimanena vishayena jiveta pranan dharayet tat pariman eva kamah सेव्यते इतिर्थ सो इट मीन्स दट यत परिमाणेन इन विच क्वांटिटी 
uh, of consumption of the sense objects uh, we will prana dharet will dharet would mean will keep up our uh, prabhupada says this uh, to keep the soul and body together means so that our body still functions uh, it stays healthy so we should only take or consume that much amount of uh, vishaya the sense objects so, so that uh, we sustain nicely pranam dharet that is the meaning jivasya jivanasya cha punah ih asmin jagati karma bihi नित्य नैमित्तिक धर्म अनुष्ठान द्वारा यह प्रसिद्ध स्वर्ग आदि स अर्थ लोभ नाउ इन दिस वर्ल्ड व्हेन अ जीव परफॉर्म व्हेन अ जीव अ लिविंग एंटिटी इन हिज जीवन इन दिस ह्यूमन फॉर्म व्हेन ही परफॉर्म्स परफॉर्म्स मींस अनुष्ठान हिज प्रिस्क्राइब्ड ड्यूटीज व्हिच आर द नित्य वंस एंड द नैमित्तिक वंस then by the performance of such duties uh, the purpose is again the purpose is again not to attain heaven and so on so the pur- performance the purpose of uh, performance of nitya and nimittika duties uh, is not to attain uh, the secondary uh, yeah the heavens and so on but kintu rather tatva jigyasa bhagavad anushilanam eva artha they should result into uh, curiosity into our hearts they should result into uh, incurring or yeah, incurring curiosity in our hearts and that curiosity shouldn't be material or for the normal material objects but it should be regarding bhagavad anushilanam it should be regarding bhagwan so just a minute uh, i have a phone call and it's little important just a minute please
ओके हरे कृष्णा सॉरी रियली सॉरी फॉर दैट आई जनरली डोंट डू दैट थिंग बट इट वॉज लिटल नेसेसरी सो वे वर वी या सो वी वर सो आई थिंक वी डिड इट एक्चुअली द श्लोका सो इट शुड रिजल्ट इन टू क्यूरियोसिटी ऑफ द तत्व भगवत तत्व एंड दैट इज द मीनिंग इज इट फाइन एनी थिंग any doubt here uh, or else will end and please revise the sutras and the applications and we'll move ahead tomorrow jai ho uh, akrura prabhu is it fine charuta mata ji mahaprabhu yeah, yeah. ji yes prabhu so, thank you yeah thank you. yeah it's it's okay i this week i hope i have more time i've been just doing many formalities and documents yeah and so yeah i think this week i can study maybe one hour in the morning sutras and take the rhythm again yes don't keep things in like uh, you know pending then it will increase the bulk uh, mm. the size and afterwards at one day you will think oh it would be an impetus for you to give it up at a later point then hmm so so yeah bit by bit we can move slowly of course again but uh, we should just 